Hi, I'm Felix. This is the Hyper Ham Retrospective video. This is like the fifth time I'm recording this because I keep talking about my game too much. Um, basically, this is just uh, the the last devlog that I did. I, I mentioned I needed to do a little bit more work, but I wasn't going to do any more devlogs. Or the game required some extra C++ code to get uh, to meet all of the game gallery requirements and the uh, gameplay programmer for my team, August, uh, walked me through it and, and showed me how to do that, and, uh, and we got it. We got it good to go. So I've submitted it to the DigiPen Game Gallery. I, you know, checked that it met all the requirements, and I think it does. Um, but they have to go through and do their own certification, obviously. But I'll hopefully know in the next couple of months whether it got accepted or rejected. And if it's accepted, then you, you'll be able to. Uh, Play it. You'll be able to download and play it on uh, PC systems, and uh, probably do an announcement video. <laughs> Just like a really small video saying the game is now available on the game gallery. Go play it. I think it's fun. Um, yeah. As far as this retrospective video goes, this mostly is just going to cover some of the material that I wrote for the retrospective paper that, that I had to do for this class. Um, this is things that went well, things that didn't go well, and what I learned. And after having done this video it being like a half an hour every single time, I'm going to try to scoot through these really quickly. So things that did work well. Um, number one was the uh, level design. So before I came into this semester, the level was super open, destinations and delivery centers all over the place, and you could go in kind of any direction you wanted. That idea sounds cool because it's like very... You can explore things and kind of find a good uh, route, but players had trouble doing that, and they ultimately they just needed more guidance in terms of what's going to be a good route and what's not. So making the levels a little bit more linear, uh, breaking it into a few islands that are mostly linear with a few main paths and uh, kind of you know things connecting them, uh, like whenever you jump over the water between islands, that kind of thing. Uh, that worked out much better in terms of being able to kind of constrain the paths that I expected the player to go down and be able to make those feel really good, have the hills the right, excuse me, space apart, um, the right elevation, things like that, for you to get a really good uh, glide off of them. Um, and yeah, and it just has better guidance for the player, like they can more easily see this is the route that I want to take uh, to get from point A to point B. Um, Another thing that worked really well, and it's showing right now, is the rhythm gameplay. So uh, this was something new that I added this semester that wasn't in it previously. And when I was thinking about the, what I wanted to add to the game, that was something where the, the core loop of the game, uh, which you do kind of on a what people call like a minute-to-minute -minute gameplay, um, was really just go between the delivery centers and destinations and deliver stuff. Your progression loop on the outside of that is really simple. It's just you know kind of buying upgrades. Uh, in in this, the progression loop got improved a little bit with the dialogue. Um, you you have a, a few more opportunities to like talk with your roommate, for instance, and stuff like that. So there's a little bit more progression there. Um, but the core loop was was really really thin. And I realized you know players spend a lot of time, especially once they get all the upgrades and they're kind of at a higher level of play. They're better at you know timing it really well to get lots of air. You spend a lot of time up in the air doing nothing. So I was like, well, this would be a good thing. Uh, it would be fun. I love rhythm games, so it's like this This just feels right. Um, and to have your hamster doing little hamster dance, dances in their hamster ball, that just sounded perfect to me. Um, and people people love it, so <laughs> I think it worked. <laughs> it's just one of those things that it, it just makes sense. It just clicks with players, um, and sometimes that's, that's all you need. That's great. Um, so it really fleshed out my core loop and what I wanted to do. Another thing that worked well uh, for this game, I got it. the The way the the grading for this class worked was uh, you're graded partially on engagement of the game. Uh, you know whether or not it, it it kept the player interested for the time, um, but also uh, on a specialty that you picked out. So the specialty I chose to be evaluated on was uh, user experience design which is kind of, uh, it can be a combination of user interface, which, you know, I tried to improve up my menus this semester, which I think still could use more work on the UI stuff personally, but uh, 
uh, I'm, I'm definitely getting better at it. I'm improving at it. Um, and I know, you know, kind of what I want to, what, what I want to fix and what I want to improve there. Um, but really the game feel stuff. So when you get the handle and the soda hat, uh, those progression things that upgrade you and make you feel like you're going really fast and you're really cool. Um, those were big here. So the field of view change whenever you use the handle and the little white speed lines whenever you get the soda hat, those were kind of two of the main draws. Um, and they were pretty easy to implement, but just an extra layer of feedback on top of the obvious like number upgrade to now you fall faster, now you just move faster. Players notice that stuff but if you add some extra feedback on top of that, some, some visual spice or some audio or whatever, it really helps cement like, yeah, you are better now. Like <laughs> your character moves faster and it feels good. Um, so, and, and you know, my instructor gave me good feedback on that and said like that, that stuff works really well. Um, you'll see here, like I had that third upgrade, which is the cleats. Um, and I was just like, not really sure <laughs> what kind of extra uh, feedback to add on those. So I think it's kind of a shame that I didn't figure out something cool for those. But at the same time, they're kind of this weird little like quality of life update that uh, helps you help. Like if the game feels better with them, it feels noticeably better, but it's a really like kind of a subtle change that you, you might not. Yeah, if you're not thinking about it, you might not notice it. But when you are, you do. Yeah, so that was something I, I kind of wish I could have done better, but I, I, I didn't. I didn't think about it a whole lot. Um, and the last thing, something that went really well was these uh, devlog videos. I had watched uh, the System Era devlogs. Uh, shout out. <laughs> they make Astroneer, one of my favorite games, and their devlogs are just super entertaining. I love, they're, they're really chill, calm, and I love watching them, uh, their, their process and their interactions and stuff. So I've wanted to do something like this for a long time. I wanted to do something like this with a team, I think would be amazing. Um, you know, I might maybe talk to my team if, if I work uh, with multiple people next semester, uh, which is what I'm planning on doing, about doing videos like this, uh, kind of showing all of us working together. Um, but yeah, it was, it, was, it was helpful for me in a couple different ways. For one, uh, even though I it didn't change the fact that I'm still kind of like just locked in my room for hours a day <laughs> working on stuff by myself, kind of slowly going crazy from quarantine, it made me feel a little bit less uh, stir crazy, like kind of emulated that sense of community that I got uh, at DigiPen from just being in a room full of other people working on stuff. Um, also, whenever you're having a problem with something, this is the kind of like known as the rubber duck solution where you just put a rubber duck on your desk and uh, having to talk about a problem that you're having out loud tends to get your brain to reframe it and uh, you tend to kind of have those eureka moments and if you watch the devlogs you notice there are times where i'm just like i'm having this weird problem i'm not sure what's going on and as i'm talking about it i'm like i just realized exactly what's going on um and so having the devlogs to just talk stuff out while i was working on it ha caused me to have a lot of those moments which is really helpful for me um, and I hope, I, I would really, really like to do some sort of educational content on game design uh, or development in the future, especially design, because I think that's really kind of lacking, honestly, in terms of free, edu free high quality educational content uh, on game design specifically and not just development programming stuff, but design. I would love to do that in the future. Even if I don't get to do that though, these are relatively low impact on my schedule. Like I have said before, I don't spend a ton of time like editing them and stuff. Um, and they're, they're fun to do for me. And uh, I, I hope that if it doesn't just provide some entertaining, relaxing material to you or whatever, um, that if you're interested in design that uh, or game development, that it maybe it pushes you over uh, pushes you over the ledge to make that not sound horrible, um, but you know get, gets you to try something new if, if it's something that interests you, um, or you know in, inspires you to work on something, or that, that you learn something from it. Uh, I, I I hope for all those things. And this is kind of an offshoot, but uh, if if you have questions about game d design development, or whatever, feel free to drop them in the in the comments or. Uh, or DM me otherwise, or whatever, send me a message, and uh, I would be happy to to talk about those things with you. Um, and yeah, I, I hope that it can help in those ways. So, things that didn't go as well.
Um, one thing was I really wanted each island to feel diverse and like its own kind of like little place um, for a couple of reasons. One, having a map that is broken into smaller chunks that each have a unique feel gives the player a sense of like not being lost and having like an idea of the, their sense of direction and stuff like that. So it's helpful for them in that way. And it also just increases the feeling of like, oh, I explored a new area and I feel good about discovering something new and like I get to see some cool new content. Um, you know, even if it's as simple as this place has trees, this place is like a desert area with cacti, that can mean a lot to a player in terms of their level of engagement. And that's exactly what I kind of wish I had done here. And I could have gotten a lot of mileage out of that landscape material by just plugging in some different things into it I think if I had made, like, in my mind, I immediately think, like, one of these ter uh, three islands could have been, like, deserty, maybe, you know, pull some cacti off of the Unreal Marketplace, and then another one could have been, like, alpine, snowy uh, boulders and stuff like that, and, you know, I'm sure I can find some, like, snowy spruce trees or something like that uh, for free on the Marketplace. Uh, and that that would have helped solve those problems i think for players uh would have would have benefited players in that way i did use different tree types on each island to try to do that but i asked players about it when they play tested and they didn't really notice um which makes sense to me they're all just green trees <laughs> if you're not really paying attention to them you probably wouldn't notice um and i also you know made those land the landmark buildings like the tower with the like plastic crawly tubes um but I don't think they're prominent enough in the map that players really notice those either or like use them as a landmark to kind of navigate uh, between different areas. Um, another thing that didn't work well, this project was old. This was like the second game that I made in Unreal and then I didn't work on it for a year and then I picked it up again to, to finish it up for, for this last semester. Um, and the amount of like old broken code, I expected there to be some bad code that would be hard to work with but I didn't expect uh, is it was really really ugly in a few places, and it gets it gets difficult when you're trying to plug a system into like a bunch of other different things, right? So I had to like my delivery centers, for instance, I needed to turn those like on and off for the dialogue system, so you couldn't like buy things while you're having a conversation with somebody because um, they were both using the same little dialogue box, so it would have screwed it up. Um, and I went back and realized that like, oh, my delivery center code is super bad and is gonna make this impossible. So I had to re redo a lot of it. Um, and I just wish that I had accounted or you know kind of expected more of those problems. Um, and thankfully my professor did expect those <laughs> problems for everyone um, and built in a couple of tech debt weeks into the semester, which I would not have done on my own. So I'm really glad that um, you know he has the experience to know you're going to run into unexpected problems and it's good to have a couple buffer weeks to be able to deal with those things so the, the overall the project went really well there wasn't really a whole lot that went really poorly in my opinion um but yeah so things that i learned from the process um and i guess this was kind of a bad thing was i wish that i had decided where i was going to publish the game early on right um, I had probably thought about the DigiPen game gallery, but not super seriously, and was kind of just like, well, if I'm, you know, want to post it there, then I'll do the extra work and we'll get it done. I really would have saved me a lot of headache to just do that from the very beginning. And also with my team game, I realized I thought about that from the beginning, but didn't clearly communicate it and set goals for my team to like make sure that we had all the stuff for that. And we should have done that from the very beginning. Um, probably even should have worked on those game gallery requirements from the beginning so that we didn't get to the end and you know we're trying to um, kind of like uh, scramble to get them all done at, at, at one time. If you're interested in publishing your game anywhere, uh, you should immediately take a look at what the requirements for publishing there are. Steam has its own technical requirements just like the DigiPen game gallery does. Um, the only one I can think of off the top of my head that doesn't really have requirements like that is uh, itch.io. Um, which is a great platform, but it's just something that you need to consider if, if you want to put your game up online somewhere. Uh, and you should knock those things out early on. Another thing that I learned, I have some notes, I'm kind of blanking. Oh yeah, uh, more player testing. This is a thing every single semester where I'm just always like, I wish that I had done more play tests with people. We had forums where we post weekly builds, which 
another yeah if you're doing game dev stuff you should try to build your game very frequently once a week is, is a good time frame for that so that you don't like leave things broken for a really long time for instance you should your game should try to be as stable as possible um but we would upload these games uh these builds once a week and uh part of the class was the uh part, part of your grade which you're graded on was these forum posts where you would give feedback to people um which is great uh, but so, you know, sometimes people blanked out and like didn't do enough forum posts in a week, and I would only get like one, maybe one piece of feedback in a week or whatever. Maybe sometimes I wouldn't get any, um, and I didn't do a whole lot of in-person playtesting. I mean, for obvious reasons. But even just with my family, uh, I could have probably done a little bit more testing with them. But obviously, you want to expand your pool to be as many people as possible. And I wish I'd done some uh, virtual playtesting, like have people take video uh, recording of them playing or stream it directly so I could watch them live. Um, just because there's a lot of things that you don't pick up unless you can watch the game as they're playing it. If people are just typing back feedback to you, that stuff can be useful, but you can also miss a lot of things. And especially if it's like a first time player that's unfamiliar with the game, they might go through the game and like miss an entire system Right? Some people in this game, uh, this is something that could probably be better tutorialized, but don't realize that you can right click to slide down hills faster. Or they, they see the prompt for it, but they don't understand what it means. Um, and they could go through the whole game without using that mechanic, which in my opinion would be like super boring. And I would not want people to play the game like that. I you know, would want to know that they're not doing that. But they might not realize it, and then they wouldn't put it in the feedback because they're just like, they don't even know that that's a feature in the game. So being able to see it uh, is super, super important. Um, so if you're playtesting your games, make sure that you're actually getting some in-person data as well, or at least data that you can watch the gameplay with your own eyes. Stuff that I learned how to implement, um, like kind of new, new features that I hadn't built out before. Um, for one, the rhythm gameplay. I had made a rhythm game before, actually my freshman year. <laughs> I was told not to do it because they, they're like, this is going to be an undertaking. It's going to be really hard. Uh, it's got a lot of technical challenge. Actually, wasn't super bad. You just have to get kind of moving objects that uh, uh, synchronize to to a beat. Um, but that game, that we made the beat maps uh, by hand, so we placed where each beat was going to be. And with this one, I wanted it to be procedural. Number one, because I didn't want like weird rhythms. I didn't want like a ba 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 which you could do with a custom like beat map uh, kind of editor or whatever. But for this, I knew I wanted to keep it really simple because it's something that you're doing while you're playing sort of like the main game. It's like a mini game almost. Um, so I knew I only wanted it on quarter or eighth notes. I was like, I can just, if it's just three buttons, I can just randomize which button it comes down uh, with no problem. It's totally fine. So I knew from the start, I was like, well, if I implement it this way, I'm just gonna make it so that you put in a tempo value for the song uh, and it generates the beats automatically and speeds up or slows down their animation in order to you know match it to the tempo. Uh, and I hadn't really done anything like that before, but it, it worked uh, pretty well and uh, it was easier than I expected also. I, I think I got it kind of implemented faster and with less difficulty, so it was great. Um, I'm glad that I learned how to do that. Something that saved me so much time was I, f I figured there was some way to do the, uh, the landscape material procedurally, and I'll link the video that I used to learn how to do that. Um, but this m landscape material automatically places uh, grass, dirt, and rock, uh, depending on the pitch of the landscape, which is super useful because you basically don't have to paint anything by hand. At least in my case, I didn't need to paint anything by hand. Um, and it automatically changes with the shape of the terrain, uh, which is super useful. And I, I watched another video that showed me how to do kind of the coastlines. Uh, so near the water, it won't put any grass so you don't get like shrubs growing out into the water. It like only puts the rocks and dirt, um, which I combined the two to get that effect. And then the uh, landscape grass type, I didn't know was a thing, but it basically allows you to place uh, foliage on 
certain materials uh, the way that that guy did his. He made it only place on grass, right? Um, and you could place, if I wanted to, I could make like rocks or twigs or whatever spawn on the rocky parts, um, but it was fine the way it was, I think. But those things, excuse me, doing it procedurally saves you so much time and it makes it so that it, if you go back and try to edit the landscape later, if you want to add more hills or whatever, you don't have to go back and repaint anything. You can just reshape it and it's going to do all of that material and uh, foliage work for you. So huge time saver. I'm super, super glad that I learned uh, how that works. Um, and then the last thing that I learned how to do, this was pretty easy, but I learned how to make an installer, uh, which I had never done before. Um, there's a, a specific software for it called uh, Inno. Um, if I had had to learn the Inno script you know, from scratch, it probably would have been a, a fair bit more difficult. But thankfully, um, a DigiPen grad, Chris Onorati, bless him, he's amazing, <laughs> um, put up a his own Inno script, customizable, flexible Inno script uh, on kind of a private DigiPen forum so that people could use it and he made sure it was, you know, game gallery compliant. Um, so that thing was immensely valuable. I, I didn't know how difficult it would be to make a uh, an installer. And using that script, it took me like an hour. Uh, it was super foolproof. It was super easy. The only difficult thing was figuring out how to do redistributables. Um, and, and thankfully, Unreal packages them all into like one EXE when it gives it to you. So setting that up was also easy. So those were uh, the things that I kind of learned yeah, how to, how to implement through the project. Um, so like I mentioned, that, 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 that's all the content for the video, basically. This is it. Uh, if I, if this game, if and when the game, de depending on if there's some horrible uh, hand of God act that's like, oh, you don't, you missed a ton of game gallery requirements that you don't have time to finish or whatever, maybe I won't. Uh, you know, if I, if I fail really hard on that first try, uh, and it's not worth you know the time and effort to get it up on the game gallery but I th i'm pretty sure that in a couple of months within the next couple of months i'll get it back and that it'll be approved and go up there and i'll do uh, uh if that's the case i'll do kind of a announcement video like it's up on the game gallery go download it <laughs> um but uh depending on you know when that happens it might be later um maybe even later today i will be doing more game development content i really like doing these videos i'm going to keep up uh, with doing that, I hope. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for those things. If you uh, watch the devlogs and you interacted with them, especially if you give them likes, comments, and stuff, I know that the audience is super, super small uh, for these things and that you know I don't have a ton of content. And it's still rough. I'm, like, I'm still learning how to do this in a way that's entertaining and, and concise. I say as my video probably approaches like 20 minutes, right? Um, but... I think I'm getting better at it, and uh, and I like doing it, so I'm just going to keep doing these videos. And definitely there will be more game content of just me making stuff. Uh, if not, I would, uh, or it that will at least be the case. I would also love to do to uh, sort of more tutorial educational stuff, but that might not happen um, depending on how much time I have. I, I yeah, I, I'd like to do it, but it might not be in the cards. Um, but there will be more game content, so stay tuned. Thank you. Happy, safe holidays. Please don't go anywhere. Uh, interact with people in person if you don't have to. And uh, take care. See you later.